Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video. This time is going to be a new World Chalice combo tutorial for 2019, post-Savage Strike, because we're going to be utilizing our new toy Borload, Savage Dragon. Now, basically, I don't see any reason why to wait any further on doing this, because Savage Strike does come out in like three-ish weeks at this point, and there's not really any big events between now and then. Sydney was the only one in between, between the previous format and when we were getting our Savage Strike set, so YCS Chicago is the next major event we're going to be playing at, and that's the next major event that somebody could take World Chalice to, so this is one of those combos that you could be performing at those events, but before I get into the combo, I would like to apologize for not doing any videos for the past two months, I've just been in a bit of a funk, lacking motivation, and all that sort of stuff, but fortunately that has passed, but basically I'm going to start doing daily uploads again, I might not upload on the weekend days, but I'm definitely going to be doing daily uploads on the weekdays, so if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, and like the content that you see and all that sort of stuff, I would love to welcome you on board, and I would love to see you subscribe to the channel, essentially, uh, because it would support me a lot, and it would let me know that you guys like what you are seeing, so I would love to welcome you on board. But also, I'm doing daily weekday live streams over on my Twitch page, and those usually start around 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is my local time zone. Link to that is in the description down below as well. Link to my Twitch page if you want to catch my daily live streams, where I play Yu-Gi-Oh! Hearthstone Duel Links or maybe some other game, depending on what I'm feeling, then you could definitely go to that, follow that, and uh, get notified next time I go live, as well as channel's private Discord server, link to that is in the description as well, and I also announce when I'm going to be live streaming on that, as well as chat during uh, the day, usually, so if you want to talk to me or some other people that are usually helpful, that would be the place for you, but so, what I'm going to show you today is a World Chalice combo, this one is going to be Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice, and it does technically also require Rescue Ferret, but that is not a prerequisite for the combo working. Now, you can have Fe uh, Venus plus Rescue Ferret, um, and that would be its own combo. You could have uh, various different ways to open this combo, like Lee Transmodify, um, and like getting into Rescue Ferret later. Basically, we're going to be trying to draw as many cards as we can and setting up for a Rescue Ferret play. What this basically yields is we're going to be performing an Ngirsu Draw 3 off of this specific combo sequence, an Ngirsu Draw 3, Summoning at least one star Yuja, and we're going to gumble our opponent for four, and we're going to end on a Borload Savage Dragon. So, very, very strong, in my opinion, a uh, way to put this deck's win condition back into the extra deck, rather than trying to rely on drawing into Gamma Seal Waterfront shenanigans, as well as it allows you to play Magical Midbreaker Field in the main, uh, which lets the deck be a little bit more resilient against hand traps and going second against decks like Altergeist and, um, and Sky Striker, and various other things but so basically this deck that I'm playing is a 48 card list this is my personal list that I've been testing a good bit I've been doing a lot of math and theory into this uh, that's one of the things that keeps drawing me back to World Chalice is that it's more of a math problem than anything um, like I've never put as much math and theory into a deck than World Chalice but if you're wondering about math I'm gonna be giving you a lot of numbers for various situations later in the video but the first one starts now in your opening hand, in this list, a 48 card list, I'm playing four copies of Rescue Ferret, I'm playing three copies of Ferret, and then one copy of Emerging Emergency Rescue Rescue, and that puts a 36.58% chance of opening Rescue Ferret into my opening hand. But that's not necessarily the be-all, end-all. I actually much prefer to see Rescue Ferret later, but I would welcome opening it. Now, I could play more copies of it if I wanted to, put the deck up to 50 cards, or maybe change some cards around. Uh, basically... I'm comfortable with four copies at this point, and you'll understand why once I start getting into the more advanced math later on down the road. But So, making an Imduk out of one of the Shine Balls, I'm specifically leaving the Shine Ball here. You want to leave a Shine Ball in the one of the two furthest zones away from the side of the field you're working on because of the way we're going to be structuring things around to get to our Ningirsu. And so we've Tribute Summon for the World Legacy World Chalice. And then we're going to link the Imduk and the World Legacy World Chalice away into Nightmare Phoenix and trigger World Legacy World Chalice's effect. Now we're going to summon Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, and World Chalice Guard Dragon. Now Lee is going to go over here, and then Guard Dragon is going to go in any one of the zones that's remaining. It doesn't really matter. And then Lee is going to trigger its effect here to search for another copy of World Legacy World Chalice. Now, you want to keep your Guard Dragons and your Lees in the deck at as high a quantity as possible, because those are cards that are usually targets for Rescue Ferret. Now, Eva is usually the level 1 target for Rescue Ferret, but if you already had it in your accessibility pool and you discarded it from your hand, sent it to the grave on Brilliant Fusion or whatever, then you need another level 1. 
to supplement for it later in the combo sequence. So that's what the other guard dragon is for. And Lee is usually the level 2 that you summon off Rescue Ferret in conjunction with your level 3 monster. But we'll get to that later. But so we're at this point, and we're going to use the Link Spider, and we're going to use the Guard Dragon to make Eve the World Chalice Priestess down here, vacating our extra monster zone, which means we're able to put a World Chalice name up there in the form of Imduk. And now from here, all we need to do is facilitate a way to summon our Ningirsu, which is just by making another Imduk. So we'll make another Imduk with this, and then we're going to make an Ningirsu with Imduk and Nightmare Phoenix. And then we're going to trigger our Ningirsu, trigger our Imduk. Imduk is going to special summon the World Legacy World Chalice. And now from here is where I'm going to start throwing a bunch of math at you. So we're going to summon the World Legacy World Chalice over here. We're going to draw three with Ningirsu. At the point that we dr start drawing cards, as you can see, my deck has 34 cards left in it. These three were in it. I had a 37 card deck left over. This is all based off my 48 card list, but you can modify this math through hypergeometric calculations to fit whatever size deck you are playing. Basically, remember I said that off the four copies of Rescue Ferret I had, in my opening hand, I had a 36.58% chance of opening one of them, or at least one of them. That's all well and good. Once we get to this point, if we didn't have Rescue Ferret yet, when we start drawing cards, since we're going to Ningirsu into a Saryuja Skull Dread, which we're going to do right here, right now, we're essentially drawing seven cards. And we're leaving the Ningirsu on the field. Now we're summoning Saryuja Skull Dread over here because we want the maximum amount of spaces with Link Arrows pointed to them open for us to utilize. But so, Saryuja Skull Dread here, drawing four cards, we've essentially drawn seven cards. We've drawn three off Ningirsu, seven off Saryuja. We're putting the three worst cards slash Garnets back into our deck. Now at this specific point, we've drawn seven cards out of my 37 card deck at this point. The chance of seeing one of my ferrets, at least one of my ferrets, the rescue rescue, or a ferret off of this point in the combo is 58.51%. So just over half, close to 60%. And that's already respectable in its own right. But ferret is truly the be-all end-all of a lot of our combo sequencing. So we want to have better ratios for that. But fortunately, at this specific point, Rescue Ferret is not the only card that we have that we could draw into that extends our play to get to that Rescue Ferret. After drawing the seven cards, you could have drawn Rescue Ferret, one of the four copies that's in this list, or this list is playing Lone Fire and Predator Plant Orphus Scorpio because those are additional starter cards to make Saryuja. You could have drawn Lone Fire, Scorpio, Brilliant Fusion, Soul Charge, as other cards to make at least one other Saryuja and try to draw again for Rescue Ferret. So, off of that, when we drew seven cards here, not factoring in Rescue Ferret being drawn, that's ten other cards that we could draw that extend into another Saryuja. What I mean by extending into another Saryuja is that if we wanted to special this Lone Fire, we could special Lone Fire with the Saryuja, Thin our deck by getting all the Lone Fires out of it, summoning Scorpio, Scorpio discard a monster for Darling Cobra, Darling Cobra gets Brilliant Fusion, then we can play the Brilliant Fusion, Brilliant Fusion will either send Trick Clown to be an extra monster on field, or it could send Eva to go ahead and stack our hand up full of uh, extra cards and thin the deck by more cards, so when we Saryuja, we have a higher chance of reaching uh, Rescue Ferret. But basically, we'd have enough materials on board to make another Saryuja Skull Dread, we've just thinned our deck by another, you know, eight cards-ish, so that only increases that initial chance of drawing Rescue Ferret from that 58.51%. So it only gets higher going forward. And like I said, the cards you could do that with are Brilliant Fusion plus any monster, because you'd need a monster to discard off Lone Fire or Scorpio anyway to make that play happen. So and you're playing a deck with 31 monsters in it, at least in this case. So if you don't have a monster in your hand, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. But... So you have Scorpio, Lone Fire, Brilliant Fusion, all of those put at least three monsters on the field and thin the deck by some amount of cards, which then allow you to step up into another Saryuja with your Saryuja. But so, just drawing one of those ten cards, Lone Fire, Scorpio, Brilliant Fusion, or Soul Charge, off of this seven card draw we just performed, after thinning our deck down to 37 cards in this instance, is a 91.37% chance. Practically guaranteed, you have a less than 10% chance to miss... And that's not even factoring in Ferret could be drawn in conjunction with these 10 cards, and then you've just established the win condition anyway. In this deck, I've got the four Ferrets. 
if we put the four ferrets into that card pool of 10 cards, now we're at 14 cards, that is a 97.62% chance to hit at least one of them at the point that we are resolving this Saryuja in this combo sequence. Math is fun, right? So literally less than a 3% chance to miss, to miss every single extender in your deck. And that's not even factoring in cards like Exodius, Monster Reborn, and other various other just things that could be lopped on as ways to extend. So it's practically guaranteed as far as the way the math is checking out. Now all these hypergeometric calculations I'm doing are isolated experiences. They're not you know, factoring in each other into their ethos, but it's you can't really do that because of the fact that they are requiring uh, factoring in the math for multiple cards. But just looking at this, drawing 7 cards, 37 card deck, 14 cards that you can draw, the 4 ferrets, and the 10 other cards, the Lone Fire, Scorpio, Brilliant Fusion, Soul Charge, that is a 97.62% chance to hit that. And then you had a 58.5% chance to hit just the ferret um, if you weren't factoring in anything else. So math is fucking fun, right? Uh, World Chalice is just a gigantic math problem. But so all that math out of the way... <laughs> We're going to continue the combo sequence. So if you understood that, great. If you don't, I'm so sorry. Uh, but so we're going to put back Eva, Garnet, and just, you know, cards. You're just going to put back cards. Um, doesn't really matter what they are. We have the Emerging Rescue Rescue, so we uh, we don't really need to do anything else. You could obviously extend with another Saryuja. Um... You could obviously just, like, extend further because we had, like, Lone Fire and all this other stuff. Um, but, like, that's not the point. I did a lot of solitaring with this deck on uh, on my stream recently and, like, showed the different, like, routes that you could go into. Um, and a lot of it was by the seat of my pants as well. Like, there was a lot of instances coming up that I just, like, had never thought of. But so, you use Saryuja, Special the Rescue Ferret out of your hand, and then you're going to use Rescue Ferret and you're going to get Blackwing Steam the Cloak out of your deck. You're going to get a... Eva out of your deck, there it is, and then you're going to get Lee the World Chalice Fairy. You don't want to get Herald of the Orange Light because it's a tuner, you can't synchro with it. But So, you're going to summon Steam, you're going to summon Lee, and then we're going to summon Eva. Now, if you're only able to get an Eva for one for just Herald of Orange Light, that's still completely fine. That's still an extra card in your hand. You'll just end with three cards in hand instead of four. <laughs> if you ran through all your Lees way too quickly and way too early, and then there's ways to augment that as well because Lee does put itself in, back into your hand. So if you're able to generate extra monsters on your field through some various method that doesn't you know, cause your hand size to decrease, like Brilliant Fusion or whatever, then you're able to send those cards to Grave to add Lee back to your hand. All this sort of stuff. This, there's a lot of different ways this deck can be played. But anyway, so you summon all of these. And we're going to synchro into the level 5 Blackwing that is not Sohaya, Graham the Shining Star. Because if we had made Sohaya, it would be treated as a tuner. Uh, because it was synchroed with a Blackwing uh, as a material. But so, we're going to get our Steam token, because that's mandatory, and then Saryuja's going to boost this. And now what we're going to do is we've established the Wincon. So we're going to use Steam the Cloak, sending Eva to Grave, specialing Steam. And then Eva is going to trigger its effect, and we're going to banish just two fairies. Uh, does not matter what they are. And like I said, if you're only adding one at this point, if you're adding one Herald of Orange Light because you cycled through all your leaves too quickly, that's completely fine. It's still completely fine, but if you can add two, and if you can structure your play in a way to add two, like adding Lee back to your hand, and then Saryuja Skulldreading it back into your deck, just to search with Eva later, that's the kind of plays you want to be making. Because it just means that you get extra cards, which means your hand is more padded, so that Gumblar does less damage to your hand, and does all the damage to your opponent. But so, what we have here is we've got these back on the field. And so what we're going to do is we're going to link the Steam Token away into Link Karibo, because we need two effect monsters to make Gumblar, and Link Karibo is necessary to trigger the Gumblar on our opponent's draw phase. And so then we're going to link the Ningirsu and the Link Karibo into Gumblar, Skull Dreadle trigger, Ningirsu could trigger here, but we don't really need it to. If you had a World Legacy World Chalice, you could special it out of your hand. doesn't really matter. But so then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to make Borderload Savage Dragon with the Steam the Cloak, because we made this because Steam, when it's summoned by its own effect has to be synchroed with a Blackwing in order to synchro anything. So we have to synchro with a Blackwing to make this. So we're going to make Borload Savage Dragon, and now all of our stuff is just going to trigger. So all of our mandatory effects. So Borload Savage is going to trigger to re-equip the Ningirsu to it. So it has three possible negations, and it's also big. It only has one negation per turn, but it can negate three turns. 
And then we're going to discard two cards from our hand and two cards from the opponent's hand. And then we get the steam token onto the field. So now from here, uh, what we've got is basically the win condition established. Like we've got all these call by the graves and stuff that we could set. Uh, that's not important. All that's important is you pass turn. And in your opponent's draw phase, you go activate Link Karibo, tribute the Steam Token, summon the Link Karibo next to this, and then you do the Gumblar and Saryuja. You're going to take two cards out of your hand, and then take two cards out of the opponent's hand as well. And so basically, having started with five cards, and then actively discarding four of them, you still have a four-card hand left over. And so what this means is that if you had to play cards like Called by the Grave against a Hand Trap, if you started your turn with activating Magical Midbreaker Field to make your Venus more resilient to cards like Ghost Ogre or Infinite Impermanence or whatever, if you started your play with these cards, you still have plenty of cards left over to still get to Gumblar for full amount. Um, and then, like, your board is insane. You've got all of these things just chilling on your field. You've got the World Legacy World Chalice and Grave, which is capable of uh, searching World Legacy Succession if you haven't played it yet. Um, the next turn, there's there's so many different factors that go into how the plays can open up from here on your next turn. Uh, but So your opponent has two cards, unless you were playing against a danger deck and then it gets kind of weird, but if you're playing against Altergeist, Sky Strikers, regular Thunder Dragon variants and stuff like that, typically this is sort of enough to just win because you've got an Omni Negation in the form of Warlord Savage Dragon, and even if they had two cards that they kept that could play through this, like... If you're playing against Sky Striker and they discarded four spells, they kept Engage, Engage, or they kept Engage, Ray. Um, if you negate one of those and then they Ray for Engage back to their hand, like they're not really going to be doing much to clear your board there. Um, and they're not going to be doing much to uh, win the game on top of all the resources you have because they've just got one Engage that's going to draw them a card. And then it's basically really RNG based from there. Um, and then you've also got cards like Call by the Grave you could have set and all that. Like all these different factors flow into the flow chart that is Yu-Gi-Oh! But basically, if I was to play World Chalice at a, like a regional level or YCS level event tomorrow, if Savage Strike was legal, somebody came up to me, twisted my arm, and said you have to play World Chalice in an event, I would play it like this because there's a lot of overlap with the starter cards. Uh, there's minimal Garnets compared to the other Rescue Ferret builds that are being played where they're playing Glow Bulb and Doppel Warrior to do a draw two play to make Cosmic Blazer Dragon and Naturia Beast. Um, it only draws two cards. Uh, it, it, like, it just, the math doesn't stack up. It has more Garnets and it draws less cards and makes Saryuja less, um, and it has less cards in it like Eva that just get extra cards to your hand, so it's like, it's really, like, not supported that well. But anyway, that's basically it for this combo. Sorry if I rambled on a bit too long, but had to explain math. World Chalice is my favorite math problem, which is why I keep getting drawn back to it, even though I keep saying this deck is dead to me, this deck is trash. I still don't think the deck is super good in terms of the meta, but I mean, like, it's still, it's capable of doing a lot of cool shit, and like, I gave you the math on this, you are almost guaranteed to get an extender to at least make another Saryuja with your combo sequence, um, and then like, that can just increase your chance to get to Rescue Ferret even further. I've done so much math on the different scenarios of like, how many cards are thinned out of deck, uh, which combo starters I had, all that sort of stuff to get to Ferret, and all of the numbers are overwhelmingly positive once you start getting into the aspect of you're drawing seven cards. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like I said before, subscribe if you're new here and like what you saw. I'd love to welcome you on board, all that sort of stuff. If you want to catch my daily live streams that happen at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every weekday, link to my Twitch page is in the description down below, as well as if you want to join my channel's Discord server, link to that is in the description down below as well. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. I might do some more World Chalice combos exploring the different starters uh, to get to the same result sort of thing. Uh, but so basically I'm just going to leave it at that before this video gets 20 minutes long. Oops. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching. As usual, thanks for your time as always. And take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.